Hey guys, Jordan here, and in this video we're gonna be talking about in-camera HDR, so let's get into it. All right, on this channel I talk about real estate photography, so if that's something you're interested in, then make sure to subscribe. Today's question is on a video from, is Flambient dead in 2022? The link will be below, but AC Photo says, have you ever used in-camera HDR? I was playing around with it on the Nikon Z5, and if I, if I set it to three brackets and expose to the uh, to the right, I will be getting decent results, but not clear windows. I haven't pulled the JPEG into Lightroom yet to see how editable it is though. Yes, very good points here. JPEGs are not very editable. That's probably the biggest problem. I have a few problems in, and trust me, I've tested extensively in camera HDR because think about it. If you can use an in-camera processing for HDR and you're getting results in camera and doing minimal edits on the back end, man, that sounds fantastic because what? You're shooting raw, you're bringing them in, you're doing all this stuff, you're stacking them. You know, if you can eliminate a lot of those steps, it makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. But yeah, in camera, from my experience on all the cameras that I've tested it on, not very good. In products of JPEG, not very flexible to change colors and also, you know, you're not getting uh, as much of a dynamic range um, as you would if you're processing in like Lightroom or something like that. And also something for me is I like to move around the property quick, right? I like to take my photos and move. And um, if you're using in-camera HDR and you test it out, a lot of times it's like churning for like literally 30 seconds before it's, it's finished and you can actually shoot your next one. So, you know, if I'm moving quickly, I, I would be waiting for my camera to process the in-camera in, uh, HDR, but yeah. Even today, like, I think recently I've tested it. I like to test, I mean, eventually, there's gonna be a good result or somebody that focuses on, um, I just don't think there's too many software programs and camera manufacturers that focus too much on real estate photography. Um, I think it was pretty impressive when uh, Photoshop did the the quick sky replacements. I'm like, oh wow, they actually are kind of thinking about landscape stuff. They probably weren't necessarily thinking about real estate photography, but yeah, make making life easier for niche uh, photography because a lot of the softwares that I test, a lot of it is all more focused on like features for portraits, right? So you get a lot of portrait photography focuses on a lot of these things. So anyways, all right, so let me make sure I finished up answering all this question because sometimes I go on tangents here, but yes, um, in-camera HDR, from my opinion, uh, of all the reasons that I've mentioned previously, uh, not a good option for real estate photography at least at this point in time, maybe sometime in the future. Uh, but, you know, the processing power in the cameras are gonna have to be faster. Uh, it's gonna have, yeah, anyways, there's a lot of things that need to change in order to get there, so it might take a while. So anyways, that's it for this video. If you got value, hit the like button. See you guys on the next one.